Envisioning Desktop Publishing, DTP, we will see an introduction to desktop publishing, the definition of DTP, history of desktop publishing in the language industry, aspects of document generation, recommendations for translation regarding DTP. Desktop publishing is a concept that is very present in the language industry, particularly in the field of translation, since it is based on written documents, mostly composed of current desktop publishing software, which has undergone an important evolution due to IT development. The aim is not to demonstrate tools or techniques of use, but to introduce the reader to desktop publishing, its definition, its general and specific history in the language industry, and some general recommendations for the most efficient DTP as possible. As to the definition of desktop publishing, there are many more or less similar, such as using personal computers to design books and booklets that are intended to be printed by inkjet or laser printers, or using a personal computer to perform publishing tasks that would otherwise require much more complicated equipment and human effort. The term has been used for publication at all levels, from small circulation documents such as local newsletters to ebooks, magazines, and newspapers. However, the term implies a more professional output with more complex layout than word processing, as it was often used in connection with domestic environments and small organizations to produce publication quality documents. Desktop publishing is very common in the language industry, where manuals, documents or other types of content are the basis of translators' work. The first desktop publishing software appeared in the mid-1980s, and from there, desktop publishing simply exploded. In the early 1990s, it had almost completely replaced the heritage technologies used for this purpose. Since the appearance of the IBM personal computer in 1981, everything has changed. Machine-oriented computing becomes a little more humanized and the user can interact with the computer through user interfaces that are somewhat basic in the view of today's user. The appearance of the first Windows system with the original Apple Macintosh led to new interfaces with menus as we know them today with greater ease for use on visualization. In parallel with these small advances, several events in the mid-1980s, including the development of Aldous PageMaker, later Adobe PageMaker, now defunct and predecessor to Adobe InDesign, ushered in the desktop publishing era. Aldous Corporation founder Paul Brainerd is credited with coining the expression desktop publishing while looking for a marketing slogan to describe the small size and relative affordability of this software in contrast to the expensive commercial for the type setting equipment of the time. The leading desktop publishing software today is Adobe, set its subscription-based Adobe Creative Cloud. Adobe InDesign Creative Clouds tops the list of desktop publishing software and is used by most professionals. The features of desktop publishing software today seems to have no limits, and InDesign is no exception, offering a wide range of functions. Basically, there are two types of pages in desktop publishing electronic pages and virtual pages for printing on paper. All computerized documents are technically electronic and their size is limited only by the computer's memory or storage space. A web page is an example of an electronic page that is not limited by the parameters of virtual paper. Most electronic pages can be resized dynamically, which causes content to grow in size with the page or content to reflow. As a reference, a book consists of three parts, front matter, body matter, and end matter. These parts will be studied and commented as all of them have a different processing as to desktop publishing tasks. General recommendations for translations are Always work in page format, not in normal or draft mode. Have the display options of all types of text enabled to see all the codes and avoiding accidental deletion. 
Do not translate, modify or move portions of text that are hidden. Do not insert manual page breaks or change footers that contain automatic page numbering fields. Do not hyphenate or justify lines manually. Do not change values assigned to document variables. Do not rename files unless explicitly instructed to do so. In addition, references will be given specifically related to references to user interface, cross-references, table of context, index, body text, glossaries, tables and figures, images and graphics. I hope you enjoyed this unit. You can complete this introduction with the materials available in the platform. See you in the next video.